Okay, so the materials you're going to need for this project are as follows. I'm going to be using some snakeskin jasper rondelles. I'm going to be using the gold coloured beading thread. Some jump rings, I've got three. Two crimp beads, two crimp covers and a toggle clasp. I am also going to be using a small macrame board for this project as well. Okay, so the tools that you're going to need for this project are some cutters i'm using flush cutters but any kind of cutters will be fine it's only to cut your beading thread some pliers now i have chain nose pliers and bent chain nose pliers these are simply to open and close the jump rings and add the toggle clasp at the very end then i have some crimping pliers now these are optional but if you do have them they do help to give a really nice finish to your piece Okay, so I've gone ahead and cut six lengths of my beading thread. I've cut them for about sort of 55, 60 centimetres. This is going to be way too much, but what I wanted was to be able to have enough beading thread for it to reduce, obviously, when I'm plaiting it, but also I'm going to be needing to lock it into points on the actual macrame board so I need to make sure that I've got enough for that. The reels come in 10 meters so you have plenty to play with. What I'm going to do is find the top part of the board so I have mine going lengthways. Now if you turn the board over it is actually plotted out for you so if you wanted to do a specific size you can see down the edges here you've got six inches, seven, eight so you could actually measure it on the front if i was doing this without demoing then i would be using this because i can use this as a measurement guide however because i will be demoing i'm turning the board over so what i'm going to do is just take some of this beading thread lock it into the top bring it back around and back around again really make sure that that is nice and secure okay then what i'm going to go and do is split these into three pairs of two. Now what I want to do is go ahead and start some plaiting. I am going to explain how I plait. Um, I am right-handed, therefore for me naturally I would like to go from the left to the right. However if you're left-handed you may feel that you may want to go from the right to the left. It doesn't matter however feels comfortable for you. Essentially what we're going to be doing is taking one side of the beading threads over into the middle and then removing the middle strand to take the place of the ones we've just moved so I've just taken the left beading threads over into the middle move the middle over to the left I'm then going to take the right set bring that over into the middle and just make sure that the middle ones become the right so the left is over into the middle the middle becomes the left the right goes over into the middle the middle becomes the right. So over and into the middle, over and into the middle. It's very easy once you get into it and a lot of people probably can plait but not everybody can so for clarification that's how I actually do the plaiting. Now you'll notice I've done probably about an inch of plaiting. This is going to be way too much but I'm doing this so that when we actually come to finishing this bracelet off it's going to make it a lot easier. If this is too short what happens is it will unravel next to the gemstone and then you'll have to kind of replat it. So this is just making life a bit easier. So what I'm going to go ahead and do now is take the two side pairs of beading threads and lock them into the side of the macrame board. Try to keep it so that your plait stays straight. Just locking that in. So this is staying straight and what I'm going to do now is find the ends. Now these are just a little bit uneven so I'm just going to trim the ends so they're the same length. Pop it onto both the beading threads feed that all the way up to the middle of the, the plait. Then I'm going to unlock the left set of beading threads and just keeping it all nice and close bringing that across into the middle so I just switch that over and I'm going to unlock the right side and bring that 
across into the middle now that my gemstone just jumped out and that's fine what I'm going to do is just pop it back to where it needs to go and pull those wires nice and tight around that gemstone I'm then going to do a quick rotation of the plait with no gemstone just to give a bit of a detail in between as you can see there then I'm going to relock those side wires into place and add another gemstone so just drop that gemstone up against there again I'm going to unlock just making sure so I'm just using my hand to make sure that stays exactly as it should and that those beading threads just catch the edge of that gemstone and then again just a quick rotation with it being plain and popping those side wires back across here then you're back to your middle and then we're just going to keep on doing the same process so drop on the gemstone catch it one and two lock and lock so you can see there let's see if I can show this to you I'm just going to go ahead and add the rest of the gemstones and then we'll be back to see how we finish this piece off okay so I've gone ahead and I've added all my gemstones I'm going to have to turn the board around just for you to see that I'm ready to do the finishing so I actually used 13 beads and that will get me about a seven and a half inch size bracelet including a toggle clasp now I'm just going to show you up close where we're at so I've added my final gemstone and I've got my two side bead um, beading threads in place and what I've actually done is locked in that final one because what I want to do now is start to finish this bracelet I'm going to place this back down and the way that I'm going to actually finish this is obviously I've got six beading threads I need to get rid of so I've locked my center beading threads into place and what I'm going to do is take out on each side one of the beading threads try to go for again which ones look like they're in the right place so I've gone ahead and I've just unlocked one of the beading threads from each side and what I'm going to do is simply tie these into a knot now you can do just a standard knot or you could do a surgeon's knot which is where you go around and then you bring that wire sorry beading thread back through again same as you would on a elastic um, say a stretchy, a stretchy bracelet if you were securing the knot on that and what I want to do is bring that all the way down Pull it really nice and tight right up against that beading work okay then obviously if this works a bit loose I'm just going to tighten that again and what I'm going to do now is move those out of the way because they've been dealt with and come back to the remaining two beading threads and do the exact same so again I'm just going to go around and then around again and I'm going to pull this nice and tight so I have two nice tight knots just there then what I'm going to do is I'm going to trim these I'm only going to trim them to about half of a centimeter a centimeter or so either side okay so you can see that I've gone ahead and cut those beading threads just here sometimes these wires may get a little bit pulled loose if you pull these really tight just come in with your pliers or your fingers and just gently sort of mold that back into place give the whole piece a little stretch and that will settle back into place then what I'm going to go ahead and do is just take a dab of super glue and just pop that onto those knots when that has fully dried I will then come back and trim these ends down properly okay so I've popped the glue onto the other end so while I'm waiting for that to dry I'm just going to go ahead and show you how we do the other side obviously this is going to be a little bit more different so I'm going to unlock these beading wires just here these beading threads and what I want to do is very carefully okay so just very carefully undo that plait so that you've got one rotation left of the plait here 
once you've unplatted it and you've got that one little bit of platin just here what I'm going to go ahead and do is I've placed it into the corner just because those beading threads were too short to go the length of the board I just need to be able to stabilize this and then I'm just going to repeat exactly the same as we did before by unlocking two of these side beading threads I'm just positioning that so that that's right you may need to just feed them under the other ones just to get them into the right placement so they're now both in the right place and again I can come in with either a surgeon's knot or you can do just a double knot so you can go one and then two and then repeat the same with these ones okay so I've gone ahead and just trimmed the length of the beading thread down just to make it more manageable but while I'm waiting for that glue to dry we're going to go ahead and prepare the toggle clasp to be added when we add the crimp beads um, to do the finishing and I'm going to take my chain nose pliers and my bent nose pliers and what I'm going to do is just remove the jump ring that's holding these two sections together now I'm not going to use this one this is just more of a sort of a um, connecting jump ring. So I'm going to go ahead. Now, if you noticed, as I said earlier, that I have three jump rings. Okay. Now, the reason is, is because I would like two for the toggle clasp and one, sorry, for the actual bar part of the clasp and one for the actual sort of toggle part. The reason being just these two loops just give a little bit more movement to allow the bar to go through the loop. So to attach these, I'm going to take one of the jump rings. I'm going to hold it with my bent nose pliers I'm just going to open this by twisting my hand so you can see okay I'm going to add my toggle bar and my other jump ring so I've just added the toggle bar and the other jump ring to that jump ring taking my chain nose pliers again I'm just going to close that jump ring back up when I drop that down like that I've got my toggle bar ready to be attached just make sure as well that all of your jump rings because I haven't opened this one I'm just going to make sure that it is nice and aligned so just wiggle that back and forth a little bit just to make sure it's nice and aligned I'm going to do the same process with the other section of the toggle clasp and then we're ready to finish this bracelet off okay so those ends have been trimmed down nicely now just take a, a bit of care when you're doing that because the last thing you want to do is cut the wrong beading thread and undo all this work so the only thing that remains now is to finish this off by adding the crimp beads and the toggle clasp itself so I'm going to take my crimp bead I'm going to feed it onto both those beading threads here drop that down now I just find this is a little bit easier uh, I'm going to pop on the toggle clasp now it doesn't matter which end and taking both those beading thread ends I'm going to pop it back around so I'm forming a loop and back down and into that crimp bead again so okay so we don't need the, the loop to be too big as you can see there it's only small enough to allow a little bit of movement for the jump ring I'm going to come in with the flat end of my crimping pliers and just flatten that crimp down now on these pliers you'll see that there's like a little kind of um, V or like a little triangle just here what I'm going to do is place that flattened bead into that so I've just placed that into that little triangle shape and that's actually created a bend in the crimp bead now again if I show you the pliers you'll see that there's three different size holes just down here when they're closed and what I'm going to do that's just to represent the different size crimp beads that you could be using so I'm just going to place the crimp bead back in and just crunch that around to make it into a nice tube and it just gives you a bit of, and hopefully you can see that just gives a bit of a nicer finish I'm then going to cut the two remaining ends nice and close so I just want to do one more stage to finish this and that's simply add 
the crimp cover. Okay, so I'm holding the crimp cover in my pliers and I just need to place that crimp bead into it. I just, I'm pushing that so it kind of, you'll almost hear it click. So you can see hopefully there that that crimp is actually sitting inside that little cover. Then just take your pliers and gently pinch and round that crimp cover to close around it. Repeat the same on the opposite end. So just to know I used 13 of these gemstones to complete this bracelet but it may vary depending on the size of the gemstone and of course the length of bracelet that you would like. If you find you've made the bracelet a little bit too short you can always add some extra jump rings or maybe an extendable clasp instead. So I hope you like the project and look forward to seeing your makes.